All right, all right. Check one, two. Check one, two. Am I coming in clear to y'all today? Yes, yes, yes. A lot of stuff that's going on in the world today, but I am still here to bring you these good podcast interviews with these most interesting people that I can find via Instagram, via YouTube, via Facebook, man. Or if you guys just call in and just say you want to talk to me, man. Well, today interview we got a special guest in the building uh let me see what she's about hold on right quick hold on all right all right this young lady yes it is a lady she's uh she's been in a she's been a professional massage therapist for over 10 years she has worked uh for fedex before coming to, before becoming a truck driver. Uh, and she's also, believe it or not, she is a competitor or a competitive bodybuilder. She's been training for over five years. Yes. Well, I would like to bring to the show Miss Melissa Williams. What is going on there, little lady? How you doing today? I'm doing well. All right, all right, all right. So a competitive, did I say that right? Competitive bodybuilder for five years? Yes. Man, what's, what, what's that, what's, what's that like? I mean, what, what, let, let me start from the beginning. How, let me, let me just start from the beginning. How did you get into that, get into bodybuilding? You want the real answer? Yes. Um, <laughs> so, I think, and I don't remember the year. It was probably 2011, 2012, whenever the Summer Olympics were on. Mm-hmm. Um, I was watching the lady sprinters. Have you ever seen them women? They no. are amazing. They literally use their whole body. And I saw that. I saw the shoulders. I saw the abs. I saw the arms, the legs, like everything. And I was like, I wonder what my fit body looks like. That's what started it. Man. Man. I don't like to run. Man. It was a visual. So... You you got you you got inspired that 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 inspired you to 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 jump into uh, competitive bodybuilding. Where where have you uh, where have you competed at? Where where were some of the places you competed at? Um, actually, I compete in Minneapolis, and I have even done a show. The only reason I did a show in North Carolina is because. At the time, my grandparents were, what, 87 and 94 or 92 or whatever. Mm -hmm. um, and I knew that if I didn't go there and do a show, that they would never get to see me compete. Uh, so I literally, I literally only did the show so they could see me on stage. I didn't care if I played. I didn't care. I didn't, I didn't care. I was like, hey, whatever, we're just going to go do this. Mm -hmm. A, so I can spend time with my grandparents. They're like my second gen. And B, um, so they can see what I have spent years and years working for. Because okay. my grandmother was very old school, like, you know, women should have muscles and have throats and, you know. And so I wanted her to see. I wanted her to see that it's not. It's like you think bodybuilder and you think jack. You think like Arnold and uh, Ronnie yeah, the, Coleman? Yeah, the men. Or, yeah, the men. The, the I, because person. I only seen I only seen a few, may, maybe a handful of female bodybuilders. But uh, mm -hmm. you know, I of course I've seen you know of course I've seen the men. You know, I I've seen the men a lot, but um. Well, the biggest misconception is I yes I am a bodybuilder. Uh, there are different categories. 
I am not a female. I do not compete women's bodybuilding. Um, I compete women's natural figure, which is a step below bodybuilding. Okay. And I compete women's bikini or NPC, which is a the unregulated non drug testing um, division in bikini. So they have natural divisions, and then you have uh, the NPC or the IFBB, which is where you win your pro card, and you become known like Jay Cutler and Ronnie Coleman. And as we all know, they openly admit that if you want to be the best, you have to use gear. Okay. You know, so um, that's kind of how all that works. So if I'm going to go more muscular uh, for the figure division, I'm always going to do it natural. Um I'm just not at a place in my life where I think I need to use gear to obtain my best physique. Um, in two years, that might change. I don't know. Okay. But right now, so that's where I'm at. You you didn't want to be you you didn't want to be like one of them diesel type females. I mean, you just wanted to, no. You, you wanted to be like you know naturally fit. You know, a little bit of you know, a little bit of muscular, but not too muscular. You still want that feminine, you know, to come across, That's right? right. I, I want to look like a woman, and I want people when they look at me, I don't want them to be like, "Is she fit or is she just blessed?" No, no, I'm not blessed. I work hard. So when that was always my um, my marker, you know. For myself, like when people look at me, do they see me as somebody? Oh yeah, she's this much. She probably looks like that all the time and eats donuts. Um. Oh, so man, okay. So how how does one get into that? Like, what 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 did you do to start uh, preparing yourself for uh, getting yourself in shape? Like, you know, do you, 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 what's your regimen like? You know, you hit the gym or something like that. What, what was it like for you to start? Um, honestly, I was just like everybody else. I want to get fit. On again, off again, on again, off again, on again, off again. Um, and finally, I got, for some reason, I thought I needed my personal training certification, mm -hmm. which... I'm not knocking it, but for me, it was dumb. Um, and I committed. I committed to training myself for a solid year. And I didn't see any change. I didn't, nothing changed. Just like everybody else, you know. You, uh, I decided I need to hire somebody. Because really, I have no idea what I'm doing. Okay. And that's what happened. <laughs> you hire a coach and with that coach I learned how to do meal prep you know I, I learned I wasn't eating enough food uh, that's also the number one problem for most people they just don't eat enough food um, and I've had a couple of different coaches and from each coach I've learned something I've learned how to modify uh, equipment in order to target muscles in the ways that I need to do them, or I've learned how to make modifications so that I can work out anywhere with anything. Uh, I've, I've learned how to track what's called macros, your proteins, your fats, and your carbs. I can literally look at a chicken breast and tell you if it's between four and six ounces of chicken, okay. and that it's going to be between you know this many grams and this many grams of protein, depending on how much it weighs. Um, so... It's taken years. It's taken five years to get to where I'm at. So it just it doesn't happen overnight. And you need to look at each situation that you go into as a learning experience. Okay. Don't just blindly, okay, they said eat salmon and spinach with a tablespoon of vinaigrette. Like, no, don't do that. It's you said no. <laughs> no. So go into it looking to educate yourself. Because if you're going to blindly follow somebody else's plan, Mm -hmm. what works for you and what doesn't work for you. And you're not going to be aware of, how do I feel when I eat that donut? The sugar rushes donuts. But I, my body doesn't feel good if I do it all the time. Okay. And you don't learn that 
if you just listen to what somebody else is telling you to do with your with your food or your workout. It's your food and your workout is your life. It's like somebody trying to tell you how to run your truck. Mm -hmm. That is the best comparison that I can give you. Nobody's going to tell you how to run your truck. Don't let somebody tell you how to run your fitness or your nutrition regimen or how your body feels or what's going to be most optimal for you. Okay. Okay. That's a good advice right there. That's good advice. I, I kind of tell people all the time, you're the captain of your own ship, man. I mean, you know, that, that dispatcher don't, don't know. All he does is sit in front of his computer all day and he, he don't know what's going on in the streets. So just like nobody don't know what's going on with your body, only you do. So yeah, that's a, that's, that's a good comparison. Good advice, man. Um, so you say you went through like five trainers in five years. Am, am I correct in saying um, that? Um, no, I've had four trainers in five years. How how much something how much something like that sets you back? It depends on different aspects. Um, I learned that my first trainer was. Robbing me blind at two hundred and twenty-five dollars a month. Oh, <laughs> man! Right, right. Like I said, learning process. You, you do you um, think? Do on, you think? Do you think the first trainer took advantage of you because you did? Because you didn't know. My first trainer was. Um, I had found someone online, like through like a, I Google search bodybuilding trainers or something like that uh -huh. and then they referred me to somebody so when you're looking at somebody who i think is commercially promoted that way um sometimes you are going to pay a little bit more kind of like with a mechanic you know if you google search like diesel mechanics well the first one that pops up it's going to be more expensive than somebody who's right down the road at mom and pop shop that's been operating for this many years and caters towards you know, like diesel, diesel drivers, you see what I'm saying? Okay. So it's, again, uneducated, went into it, um, learned a lesson. My, on average, I pay right about, and this is for me, it doesn't work for everybody, I pay right about $120, 125 a month. Okay. Um. So, Second coach was like 125. That was fitness. So he gave me workout plans and he gave me nutrition plans. Mm -hmm. um, he was he was wonderful. I learned so much about lifting and, like I said, modifying exercises, um, learning how to target muscles, creating mind muscle connections, all of that. Nutritionally, that did not work for me. When I started tracking my stuff, I found out he was starving me, literally starving okay. me at 900 calories a day. So lesson learned. Um, everybody after that has been within that range, but my last two coaches have never given me fitness plans okay. because I learned so much from that previous situation. I don't need somebody to tell me how to pair my exercises, what exercises I should be doing to target what muscles. I just need nutrition help right. because I love donuts. <laughs> don't we all i i have a, i'm i'm a diabetic i'm a type 2 diabetic and i and i do have my occasional sugar rush i'm i'm i, I do have a have an occasional uh uh donut or two but um but yeah i agree with they're you they're like tears of angels mm -hmm. i said they're like tears of angels <laughs> <laughs> So, so for somebody, for somebody that's, that's new to the, that's new to the, to the fitness game and, and competitive, uh, 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 you know, competitive bodybuilding, what, what, what kind of advice or suggestions that you can give, uh, a person that's, that's interested in getting in, getting into something like that? Um, I actually have drivers all the time ask me, how do I stay so fit and all that stuff. If you have never done a meal plan, if you don't know how to read labels, if you just love your fast food and donuts and everything else, my honest, like, 
Yeah, you go to the gym. You're going to be frustrated because the gym is only about 10% of the results. Okay. Uh, it is 90% diet. So figure out the nutrition side. And if you've never, ever, quote, unquote, watched what you ate, and you're looking to make a change, I'm going to tell you right now, do one thing at a time. You love your fast food, so you eat five fast food places, just cut one out. Just stop eating, I don't know, at Wendy's or wherever. Whichever one is your least favorite, just cut it out. Don't eat it. And okay. after about three or four weeks, just take out another one. So now you're not eating at two of those five fast food places. It is a long process because I'm going to tell you right now, as soon as you go, I'm not eating any more fast food, you are going to look around and say, there is nothing that I can eat on the go. Right. And you're going to go and you're going to order two combo meals and a large shake and uh, extra large french fries and you are going to comfort eat in your truck or wow. car or house. Okay. Um, and you are going to fail. If you cut everything out, and some people are going to be like, that's not true. It is. But um, it is very true. You will fail because if you limit yourself, then you feel like you have no other options. And I eat donuts. I don't eat a dozen at a time anymore, but I eat donuts. So, again, moderation is key, but you have to learn how to dial back. And you have to learn how to start making those changes. So instead of eating um, breakfast in the truck stop, make something in your truck because you can make oatmeal. Uh, and if you hate oatmeal, you can eat yogurt and granola. And if you don't like that, you can grab a bowl of cold cereal for crying out loud. Um, that's what it's about. Small changes will equally add up. And it's the same thing with any goal you have in your life, if you're a company driver and you want to own a truck, you are looking at that big 379 that's out peed on the top of that mountain. It's so far away. Never going to get there. Sure you are. One step at a time. Just like with fitness and nutrition. Same thing. Okay. Anything you want in your life is a goal. And getting there is exactly the same. It's it takes work. It's end game. It takes, yep. and it your takes, end game is just different. Yep, and it all tiny steps take work, takes dedication, scrimp and pinch those pennies, what it, whatever it is. If you know how to get there, you just have to ask yourself, how bad do I want it? All right, so help help a person help a person like me, um, a type two diabetic. Uh, you know, I I don't get as much exercise as I want because I'm in the truck. Um, okay. I do have, you know, I, I, I do have a, a planet fitness pass, but of course, because of the last couple of months, uh, you know, we've been hit with this pandemic and everything been shut down. Um, I get out of the truck, I walk, you know, I get my walk in and all like that. Um, you know, I, I, I get my walk in and I, uh, you know, try to, you know, try to get some movement in these bones. You know what I'm saying? Uh, as far as my as far as my eating goes, yes, I have cut down, uh, cut down a lot of fast food. Um, you know, I try not to. You know, I try not to eat as much. You know, in I mean, eat as much during the day. I drink a lot of water. Um, let me see. Um, of course, I have my occasional sugar rush, but what else? What what else can I do? As far as uh, you know, try to live a, a a healthier lifestyle while being on a truck and being a type two diabetic. Um, I actually have a list of low glycemic index foods that I could actually send you if you're interested in having. I They're appreciate it. I appreciate it. Um, major insulin spikes. So that that in itself helps, um, nutritionally speaking. As far as, like, movement, uh, getting out of the truck, walking around. You are absolutely right. Uh, everybody's guilty of who wants that spot right in the front. I know I do because it's just a little bit safer for me to walk inside from the front. 
Um, park in the back. There's that. Park in the back, walk all the way in, walk around the truck stop. Whatever you have to do to move your body, if you're at a shipper or receiver, get out of your truck, walk around. If you have a, uh, I will use the proper term, the deer guard on the front of the truck, uh, you could pull that down, use it, and do slightly inclined push-ups. Because inclined push-ups are easier, obviously, than straight push-ups. Because until your form is proper, you're going to put too much strain and pressure in your low back, and you're not going to be working the muscles appropriately. There are a lot of things you can do when you're sitting at a ship or a receiver waiting to be loaded or unloaded, sometimes for 10 hours, that most people don't think about. Because what do we all do? We hop out of the seat, we climb in the bunk, I'm going to take a nap. Uh, right. I'm going to watch some TV or surf the internet or play a game or whatever and cuddle with my cat. Um, yes, in the winter, in the Midwest, it sucks, and I do not get out of the truck and work out. I am not even going to pretend like I do because I hate the cold. I do not. Mm-hmm. Resistance bands. If you have one or two resistance bands in the truck at different um different resistances, there's a light, a medium, and a heavy, you can do simple things. You can do biceps, you can do triceps, you can uh, loop it around your seat, pull it towards you, you can work your back, you can, depending on the size of your truck, you can squat, so you can stand on it, you can squat, grab a couple of five pound weights. If you're a guy and you're a little bit beefier than me, uh, grab some 10 pound weights. Just keep a two 10 pound dumbbells in your truck. They are so versatile. And they're not really heavy, so you can do a lot of stuff with them. The okay. problem that most people don't realize with resistance bands or really, really lightweight is everybody does, what, three sets as well? Mm-hmm. That's not going to do nothing for you. I promise you it's not going to do anything. That is maintenance or maintaining um, rep ranges. So if you're going to do resistance bands, you want to do you're going to freak out. You're going to want to do like 50 to 100. Oh, okay. 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 The reason being is the resistance, yes, it causes the muscles to work, but it works differently. So you want to do that super high volume to really get the blood flowing into the muscle. Now, if it's really hard to do five, then just do the five. But I'm saying if you're doing, you know, three sets of 12 and you don't really feel like you're not tired if your muscles don't feel slightly fatigued and when i say slightly fatigued i mean like really slightly fatigued not like in your head oh yeah i just did three sets of 12 yeah i can kind of feel that that's not slightly fatigued um because your brain will tell you that when your body actually isn't feeling that your brain will always quit before your before your body will Mm -hmm. um so it's all about the amount of movement you're doing. So you get out of the truck, you walk around the truck stop one time. So, okay, I walked around. And you get back in your truck. Does that really do anything? Really? Was it was it even a quarter of a mile? Probably not. Whenever you feel like in normal life, oh, you know, all right, that's good enough. Just do a little bit more. Okay. okay. Because what you think is good enough is actually below the bare minimum. And we've all kind of just set this, somebody's going to get mad. We've set this standard, like, okay, I've done enough. But what happens when you do a little bit more? And then you do a little bit more. You see some and better. You, do a little bit more. you see some better you're results. You're no longer average. Right. You're no longer average. You are headed towards being exceptional. Um, and if you want to be better, just know you have to push yourself a little bit more and if you're waiting for somebody outside of you to motivate you and to hold you accountable you're in big trouble because that ain't never going to happen that's what's up we all got our own lives to deal with i got my i'll i'll give you info i will give you the tools that you need i will give you the information that you need i am not going to do it for you you are a grown person be responsible Yourself. You can't so, lead you you, yeah. you you can't you you know you can lead it you you can lead a horse to a pond but you can't make them drink it right hundred percent hundred percent. I gotta so give you an applause. The biggest thing, 
I got to give you an applause for that. Yes, sir. Woo! <laughs> Thank you. I'm uh, as soon as I, as soon as I get, as soon as I get that from you, I'm gonna. I, I am. You you just inspired me today. I'm I'm gonna run with that. I am definitely gonna run with that. Man, I I am. I if if you people out there is not inspired by this, I don't know what's going on. <laughs> hey, <laughs> all right. So Mel, you um you uh forty you you forty one, and it says here that you was a, a professional massage therapist uh for over ten years. What what was um uh, what was that like? Oh, I'm still a massage therapist. Oh, okay. okay. Uh, I still I still have clients that I see when I go home. Mm-hmm. Um, and I just want to clarify, I'm not that kind of massage therapist. Yeah, I hear you. I, I hear you. <laughs> you. You have you actually have a certificate in what what is it called? Like deep tissue massage or something like that. Am I saying that right? Um, that's the style of massage that I do: deep tissue site specific functional repair. Um, so I did go to school, uh, 815 hours or something like that, Mm -hmm. I think is what it was, um, of all, obviously hands-on. I had 115 hours of what they call clinical hands-on massages that I was required to do. I used to work for chiropractors. So a lot of times you'll go into a chiropractor to get your adjustment, and they want to massage you a little bit because you have neck problems or whatever. Right, right. The purpose is loosen up the muscles. The muscles attach to bones. So if the muscles are tight, they are going to pull things out of alignment. So go to the chiropractor, get a little bit of what they call soft tissue work, get a little bit of massage, loosen up the muscles. A, it makes the adjustment easier for the chiropractor so it's not really having to crank on you. And B, you're not going to be as sore because your muscles aren't fighting against what the doctor's trying to do. Mm-hmm. That then turned into me just saying I'm not working for chiropractors because I am not your phone answerer and filer. I am a massage therapist. Right. So I went off to go just do massage. And I've mostly worked for just myself. I have worked for a few companies. Uh, never, ever, 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 ever. Have I worked for Massage Envy? And I never, ever will. Um, <laughs> kind of like the swift of the massage world. Okay. okay. Just going to say. If, if you're looking for comparisons, Massage Envy, as far as my opinion, mm-hmm. is like swift of the trucking world. Everybody who comes out of school goes to work at Massage Envy. And what do we all know when you very first come out of school? You don't know nothing. Really. Exactly. You don't know what you need to know to be the best that you can be. It is a great jump off starting point, but uh, I don't trust them to touch my body. So I decided I wanted to quote unquote fix people and help people. Mm -hmm. And while a relaxation massage is wonderful, I do not need somebody to rub lotion on my body. I'm perfectly capable of doing it myself. (laughs) I need No, ba- no baby oil, no, no baby <laughs> oil, no, uh, no, uh, Vaseline, no lotion. You, no. you, you quite capable of doing that all yourself. Yep. Um, I, hear you. I actually can do massage on certain parts of my body. Like when I'm driving, as we all know, neck and shoulders get really tight. Mm-hmm. So I do. I do a little bit of work in those areas to help keep me relaxed when I'm driving because if your body hurts, you can't drive for as long or as far. So in my massage career, I learned, yeah, it hurts. It does. Uh, But it's that fine line between hurt and feel good. Really, that kind of, I'm kind of a masochist because I really like this pain, but oh my God, does it feel good at the same time. So... That actually is just as beneficial to the body as somebody rubbing lotion all over you and moving one liter of your lymphatic fluid in an hour. Um, Not saying relaxation massage isn't good. It really is. It helps cleanse the system. It moves one liter of your lymphatic fluid, which is basically like the garbage disposal system of the body because the lymphatic system takes 
mm-hmm. throw the toxins out of the body and then process them out. But it takes the body 24 hours to move that one liter. So, yes, relaxation is good. It moves one liter in an hour where your body then you're not really progressing and moving forward. You're still cleansing, quote unquote, the lymphatic system, but you're not really getting out of any problems. So that's kind of where that passion came in. I'm kind of a nerd when it comes to this kind of stuff, so sorry about the over explanation on that. Um, yes, I hurt people. Yes, they like it. Yes, they come back. And eventually they stop coming because they feel better and they think they don't need any more massage. Downfall to the business. All right. Hold on for a second. Uh, I'll tell you, i tell you. This, this, this week has not been a good week. <laughs> this week has not been a good week. Uh, all right, so massage therapists, it's, it's, it sounds like a lot of work, but it doesn't sound like a lot of work. But the, it, is, it is surprisingly uh, financially beneficial, though, right? Um, yes, yeah. when you work for yourself, yes, yeah, it is. That's what, um, the money is great, but the, the type of work I do is very physically hard on the body. Um, I never knew I was going to have a physical labor job until I became a massage therapist. Okay. 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 So um, that's kind of why I decided to be a truck driver. Like, uh, I can't be a massage therapist forever. Okay. Let's uh, let's jump in today. You started off as FedEx as a uh, as a package handler, and they gave you the opportunity to. Uh, to uh, drive trucks, did did they so they sent you to school or how did you go by to uh, acquire your CDL? Um, yes, they did send me to school. They came to me and asked me if I would be interested in the driving position, and my response was, "You realize I drive a Mini Cooper, right?" <laughs> um, <laughs> so, yes, they sent me to school. They sent me to Indianapolis for three weeks. Uh, So uh, yeah, you, so exactly. you don't, so you don't, so you the you you the type of female driver that don't mind the 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 the, the help, you know. Some some drivers out here when you when you try to help them, they'll look at you kind of funny. They they have some kind of way, and I don't need your help and go on about your business and yada yada yada. But you know, you you still struggling to get into that hole, <laughs> you know, and. And mm-hmm. and that person that wanted to help you just turned it just turned out turned around to be a dick towards you by pulling out his camera and and recording you and putting you on <laughs> and putting you on uh, right. Trucker's Wall of Shame. Yep, absolutely, hundred um, percent every day. Uh, I if anybody wants to help me, by all means. If you want to get on the CD and you want to talk crap to me, so I'm gonna talk crap back. I got you. Like, you know, I tried to do a pull through one day at Walcott, Iowa 80, world's largest truck stop. Mm-hmm. Just touched it, didn't hit anything, but it definitely wasn't set up to get in there right. Somebody wanted to say something, and I just told them, I said, call the fucking mistake. You say, screw you, <laughs> god yep. damn it. You, you, ever, you ever make one? I just did. You know? Like, <laughs> We all, you know what, we it. all, you know, we all make mistakes in this game, man. I mean, you know, we, we all been there. It's not like there's not, there's, there's not a perfect driver out here. None of us ain't perfect. You know what I'm saying? No. We, we, you know, we, we got our own flaws 
in whatever in whatever it is in this trucking industry. But you just got people that just sit there behind the keyboard on Facebook or people that just sit in their trucks with their phones out or, you know, the people that just come on and upload to YouTube or whatever and just say, you know, look, look at this guy. He, he, you know, he's a swift driver. He he's a swifty. And I, I've been sitting here for five, 10, 20 minutes watching him trying to back up into that spot. Well, instead of sitting there watching, why don't you get out and help? Maybe he's a new driver. I'm sure I'm sure you when you was born, you wasn't born with a stick shift in your hand. <laughs> you know? Yep. That's my thing. I always tell him. Uh, last time I checked, nobody came out of the womb backing up 53. <laughs> Better yet, 53 wasn't even heard of. It was like, what, less than that? It was like 40, what, it was 48 at one point. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Yeah, up until the early 80s. I think it was 82 or 83 when they introduced the 53. Mm -hmm, and they wanted Somewhere to get around there. You know, these shippers and I mean, these shippers wanted to get more product on the damn truck, man. I'm like, come on now. Um, uh -huh. So when they so <laughs> I, I want to I, 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 I sucked coming out of school. It was terrible. I I every day was like, I don't know why I'm doing this is I can't get it. You know, all that negative self-talk that we have. Um, and I just I had some really great mentors. And they, they, they got you through, yeah. they got you through. Now yeah. you, now, now you're, how long, how long are, how long, how long you been in the game? Only a year in April. Well, there you go. There you go. You got your, you got, um, are you still with, well, when you, okay. So let me ask you this. When you got your license, did you, did you drove for FedEx? Uh, very briefly, yes. Okay, so um, so FedEx got you your license. You you didn't come out of the pocket. This was all FedEx paying for it. Yep, or, they paid for everything. Oh, uh, okay, okay. So it wasn't so it wasn't a contract deal, right? Because you was already yeah. working for FedEx. Well, I mean, it was still a contract. I was supposed to work for them for two years. Two years? They wanted two years out of you. Wait, two years. Well, it was fourteen thousand for school. Plus, they, you know, they paid me forty hours a week for three weeks, and they paid for the one bedroom apartment style hotel oh. that I lived in for three weeks. Like they, they invested a lot. Oh, okay. Lot. So that's why they said two years. Okay, I got you because I'm over here. I'm scratching my head because normally, like companies that pays for your CDL. They only require like maybe like nine months to a year, you know, to be, you know, for the obligation. Mm -hmm. But you said FedEx, mm -hmm. they, they wanted two years. But what happened? What, what happened? I really, I'm going to tell you the truth. And that's not, I don't like being a negative person. Oh, no, no, so, no, that's cool. That's cool. This is Don't and this die. is your and this is your experience. This ain't this ain't nobody okay. else's. This is just what what you has experienced. So go ahead. Right. Well, the guys are jerks. The guys are absolute jerks. They are the men that work at FedEx Express local are more teenage girl princesses. Mm-hmm been a teenage girl princess. I can't work in that kind of environment. They literally would stand in my dock door as I was trying to back in and they would throw their arms in the air and like act all exasperated like, oh my God, I can't believe she can't back it in. She just got her license yesterday. What's wrong with her? Mm -hmm. um, and I, I just, I'm sorry. To me, for me, that's a very toxic environment. If you're going to sit around and you're going to talk about the fact that I had two days off without knowing that it's because my grandmother died a week before I got my license, like, I just, I can't work in that environment. That's not a healthy um, 
functioning, productive environment. Exactly. That is an environment that I don't know anybody who would flourish in. So I left. I left. And I never looked back. How long you, how, that, before you was driving, how, how long you was working for FedEx before you was driving? How long you was working there? Five months. I was one of the only females that worked in what's called the non-con section. It's the non-conveyable. It's everything that is 50 pounds and over. I chose to work in that section because I wanted the hard work. Okay, okay. So, again, like... I'm I'm sub I'm, you, it's not like I walked in the door and was given a job and no, right. but they all know who I was. They knew that I was a hard worker and yet they still this S- was their thing. Yeah, they were the elite much. of FedEx Express. They were drivers. They didn't have to touch packages. Mm-hmm. Oh yeah. Yeah. Man. Different five so five months they offered uh offered that to you? That's that's surprisingly that's surprisingly okay. that uh that usually FedEx will want well you know they they probably they they probably do more better you know hiring within you know or upgrading their people from within and that's a good thing you know what I'm saying then you know trying to have somebody that come in with the experience already like you know maybe two maybe a year or two uh two years of experience coming in but giving you the opportunity just in five months to become a truck driver um, and you successful, successfully completed the course and, and got your CDLs only for them to turn around and just, you know, put you in a toxic environment. Mm -hmm. You know, it's kind of shocking to me, but, but you, you persevered though. You persevered. So, so you jump from that. So I, so in the midst of all that, uh, you know, I talked to you, you know, via text last week, and you was jumping in the flatbed. Yeah. You know, there's not too many <laughs> there's not too many females that's that's interested in getting in the flatbed. And there's a few females that I have talked to so far that is. You know what I'm saying? That's you know, that's getting out there, getting grimy and getting it getting it done with flatbedding. What happened? Because you <laughs> You you told me you said hey, you know I'm 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 in I'm I'm in uh I'm in training I'm gonna be in training all week and I'm like oh okay well hey I I'll, I'll, I'll give you that training you know just come back to me when you get finished and then I you know I give you you know I give you a holler yesterday and you're on your way home. Mm-hmm. What happened? Um, just it give, was nothing. Just give the cliff no, notes. I. <laughs> I I showed up, I can throw a strap, I can do securement. I'm a little clumsy, but I can do it, I can get it. Uh, I can throw tarps, I can get dirty, I don't care. Like, I, I can do all of the physical aspects of the flatbed job. When they hired me, they said I would have to go out with a female trainer because I have no flatbed experience. Right. Fine, whatever. Company policy. Of course. I get it. Sexual harassment reasons, whatever. Cool. So I get there Monday and they say, well, we're not going to have a female trainer. We have some things come up and they're not going to be available. Do you mind going out with a male trainer? Whatever. Ooh, I don't care. Ho- hold I'm up. Ma- like male, 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 male. Hold up. Hold up. Hold up. Hold up. The recruiter. Uh-huh. When you talk to the recruiter now. Now, hey, guys, uh-huh. pay attention. Pay attention because this is exactly what I was talking about. You talked to the recruiter and the recruiter told you, hey, yeah, no problem. We got female trainers for you and yada, yada, yada. Did did it go like that when you talked to the recruiter? Uh, kind of. Yeah, yeah. He said that they had a female trainer and I was like, well, you know, I don't really care if I'm with a male or a female. Like, I'm pretty indifferent. I'm kind of one of the dudes anyway, so... um yeah, I, it doesn't matter. I'm here to do a job. I typically learn better from male drivers for some reason. I don't know. It's just, it's a better fit. So, but he told me it was mandatory that I go with a female. Whatever. Okay, fine. Mm-hmm. I'll play your silly little game. I'll jump through your hoops. I want to do what I want to do. And sometimes in life, you make those sacrifices to get to where you want to be. Exactly. But then, all of a sudden, Monday morning, HR tells me, 
that something happened with the woman, and they had delayed me a week because they didn't have a female trainer. Okay. And then said, okay, you can come on such and such day because we will have a female trainer for you. And lo and behold, there's no female trainer. So I have to go out with a guy. Whatever. I don't care. I just, just put me in a truck. I just want to drive, and I, I want to do some hard work. Um, that all goes through. I go through the whole, obviously, today's what, Friday? Go through the whole week of orientation. Go through everything. I pass everything. I pass on a little piece of little written test, you know, uh, safety book article 393 dot blah 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 part whatever you know all that stuff right i do it i pass and yesterday at 4 30 4 o'clock 4 30 they um after i have inventoried my truck have all my stuff all my chains everything's in my truck right not my personal stuff but all of my company issue stuff is mm-hmm. in my truck. they tell me they say oh shoot we have to have a conversation Okay. And they take me into the head of safety's office. Okay. And close the door. So you know when they close the door, it's never good. It's never good. I'm like, all right. Or no, when no. you talk to like, safety uh, period when you talk to safety period is never good. <laughs> it's it's right. never it's right. never good when 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 safety calls or, or your fleet manager say, Hey, uh, you know, we, we want to route you in so you could talk to safety. It's never good. Yeah. It's never a good conversation. No. So she, the head of HR sits down and tells me that um, they don't have a female trainer. I'm like, uh-huh. And she goes, I don't have a male trainer that is comfortable training the opposite sex at all. Okay. And I'm like, okay. So we're going to send you home. Uh, okay. Okay. Like, send me home like I should find another job. Yes. Yes, find another job, definitely. And then contact us every month. Huh? And see what the progress is on us getting a female trainer. Uh, uh, wait, what? Mm-hmm. Wait, wait. We we going to send you home. And find, you're going to pay find, me an EFS fund. Find, not even a paycheck. You're going to pay me an ESF, ESF fund. So there is no taxes taken out. So I'm never even really on your payroll. Isn't that lovely? Find another job and what? then and and then just contact us every month just to see how the process goes. That don't mm-hmm. sound right. That, that don't sound no, kosher. I, I'm gonna find no. another job just to just to just to waste their time. Why you're looking for a trainer for me so I could turn around and tell them, oh, well, the job that I was at before, they want me back now, so bye. Uh, and I don't want all those jobs on my on my history. You know right. I mean? Like that that's just not that was me when I was in my twenties. That's not me now. Um so yeah, yeah. I mean, there was I have my suspicions as to the reason that that happened, but you know. Hmm. Well, yeah, for I, ob- I for obvious reason, folks, I know I know the qu- next question is that you guys are going to ask in the in the comments below. Who's the company? Where's this company at? Where's this company at? No, she already told me that she didn't want to mention the company's name. So I don't. I don't. If I say this, okay, if mm-hmm. I say, oh, it was XYZ company, mm-hmm. what's that going to do? Everybody's going to be like, oh, my God, I heard this. I heard this. Because as, as bad as this sounds, it had nothing to do with my performance. It was something beyond that. Um, and I'm not pulling the victim card. Oh, what was me? This happened, this happened other times in my life. It mm-hmm. honestly has something to do with the fact that I don't look like a lot of other females. Exactly. You're you're the female that's I'm there not, you you're the actual female that's dared to, to do some work, to put the hard work in, to get the grind in. You're not none of this right. 
you're not none of this me too females that, you know, where the guys trying to push up on you or nothing like that. You're not there for that. You're not there for that. I mean, that ha- that that what happened to uh, a popular YouTuber back in the day when him and and him and his female uh, student or trainee, you know, got into, you know, in a, I'm just going to say inappropriate relationship. I don't know what happened. You know, nobody, nobody's over there is really talking. I mean, he, he came back and mentioned something about it in his YouTube. She came back and didn't go into too much detail in hers. So, you know, we don't know what really happened. All we know that for, you know, for the, you for the popular YouTuber that was promoting the company so much, I mean, so religiously that, you know, that they just up and let him go because of inappropriate, inappropriate ongoings in that truck. You know, you didn't, you yourself didn't want to be like that. So it wasn't, it wasn't even going to be, you know, it wasn't going to be none of that. I'm, I'm here to learn. I'm here to, I'm here to learn here to get my money. And, and for you to even say like, yo, it doesn't matter who, I train with either male or female, but you know, you do got some males out here that has that, that has that, uh, that thing that they don't want to, you know, they don't want to be around training, uh, a female sorely because of the, of what you said before, you know, inappropriate, uh, inappropriate relations, sexual harassment or whatever the case. So, you know, and that's unfortunate that, you know, that has happened to you and hindered, hindered your, you know, your journey into flat bedding and all like that. So, but that I'm, I'm sure that's not going to, that's, that's not going to stop you from getting into flat bedding. That sounds like that's what you want to do, right? It is. Um, I like the physical aspect of the job. What I reefer hauling or dead hauling is fine. Like, I don't, you know, I want to do more than just swing some doors. But again, it's, for me, flat bedding is like a secondary workout. It's a little bit more of functional movement, which obviously falls in line with my training. So that was my purpose for it. I don't mind getting dirty. Um, I'm not going to lie. I do like to wear white pants and stuff when I drive, but Mm -hmm. again... I don't mind getting dirty either. There's, you know, I can play both sides of the coin. I can, I can be cute and wear white pants and, you know, pink tank tops and all that stuff and look like a lady and be a driver. But you better believe I'm down to get dirty and gross, just like anybody else. So Melissa, so, Melissa, where, where are you? I, I know I didn't ask this in the beginning, but. And I, I think I heard you mention Minneapolis, but where are you from? Are you are you from there? No, uh, I sound like it. I definitely have the Minnesota accent, um, but no, I am not from there. I was originally born in California. I am a West Coast girl. Ah, um, okay, okay. Beach, yeah. be, beach bum. In, in your young years? Um, yeah, you yeah, definitely like the beach. Uh, you know, obviously California, Disneyland, the beach, uh, all the beautiful, wonderful weather and being outdoors and everything's green and what have you. Uh, but I also lived uh, for probably over 20 years in Arizona. So okay, you lived in the I, heat. <laughs> I, I'm solar powered. That's just what I tell people, especially up here in the Midwest. Because I'm cold all the time. Uh, I lived in the Midwest for 10 years, and I'm always cold. And I'm solar-powered, and I'm part reptile. I absorb heat from the sun. Um, I don't produce my own. So and that's just proof that I don't belong here. I just happen to live here because opportunity is wonderful in the Midwest. Okay, okay. So where where are you? So that's where you reside in that right now in the Midwest? What, what Which, which uh, state in the Midwest that you reside at? <laughs> I live in the heart of all the chaos at the moment. I live in Minneapolis. Oh, so you up it? Okay, okay. Oh my mm-hmm. god. 
I, 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 well, first thing first, I want to, I want to apologize, um, and say, I'm sorry for what's going up, going on up in Minnesota right now. Um, I am a big, big, big fan of Minnesota. Um, I mean, my second company that I, that I drove for, they, they, they're located out of New Alm, Minnesota, um, I won I I won my big uh my big pot at Canterbury I mean Canterbury down in uh Souk Souk I I can't pronounce the name Shakopee right. Shakopee thank Shakopee. you uh I won my big pot my big pot over there um a big fan of Prince of course uh okay. and got a whole heap of Minnesota Twins uh caps from up there so you know um. And to see what's going on right now up in Minnesota just just hurts my heart. You know what I'm saying? Uh, er everybody is doing it. You know, in my opinion, is doing it wrong. You know, they they uh -huh. they they turned what was supposed to be a peaceful protest in in what happened to the young man. You know, to the young man, they just turned it into a world another worldwide pandemic of of looting, violence, um, and, and more, and more stress, you know, they just, they just made a, they just made a, a peaceful thing into a worse thing. You know, we just now coming out of what well, we supposed to be coming out of a pandemic. We're not even sure. We're not even sure, but everything that's going on right now is that, you know, that we even curve the current pandemic that we was in. You know, we was locked down for like two, what, two and a half months. And, mm -hmm. you know, we were supposed to keep our distance, social distance and all like that. And then, boom, that happened. And pfft, they just throw social distancing yeah. out of the, <laughs> out of the, <laughs> they just throw that out of the park. So right. uh, what's, what's uh, your. Nobody talks about social distancing anymore, what's ironically. Your, exactly. Um, nobody's talking about, about it. You know, no. Nope going on now yeah exactly nobody's talking about it what's what's your what, what's your feelings about what's going on in your in your state in your city um how do you feel about it um i have feelings and i have thoughts and i actually do not openly discuss them because it is such a sensitive topic. It's kind of like trying to talk politics to somebody or talk exactly. to somebody. And I understand. I don't do it. Um, I don't do it. And I, I, I will not lie. I have had people on my Facebook page call me racist because I don't post about it. And that's fine if that's how they feel. Um, and I've had people try to tell me what I'm thinking, what I'm feeling because I'm not, I'm not posting about it. I post about trucking and I post about, truckers who are having trouble and truckers who are not being safe and truckers who are doing what they have to do to keep themselves safe in this mm -hmm. situation. So therefore they think I don't have an opinion. Um, and that's really not the case. I just, it's a very sensitive topic and there are people on both ends of the spectrum and there are people everywhere in between and it doesn't matter what you say or how you say it. Somebody it's when not going to like it. Because, yep. They're going to yep, get offended by it. Most people in the world are looking for reasons to be offended. And if you look, you can find about 500 reasons in a day to be offended. And um, I'm just not going, I'm not going to play your silly little game. I, I think I can feel in ways that I see fit. And when it comes to things of this nature um, that are very, black and white and gray all over mm -hmm. i just don't say anything i got you and i and hey no no uh no you 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 got nut you, you i'm good you, you you don't even have to talk about it if you don't want to talk about it and i understand because like i said this is this is a very hurtful tough uh hurtful topic across the whole spectrum let me uh let me fast forward let me fast forward from that and since you did mention that you want to you know we talk trucking i know you have i know you have feelings about what happened to the the truckers that that got themselves caught up in 
in in precarious situations like the tanker driver on I-35, the FedEx driver over in Missouri, and the UPS driver. I'm not sure where he was at, but let's talk about that FedEx driver being that that was the company that you started off with. Do you feel that would do you feel uh, what he did to protect himself was right? <laughs> Again, it can go both ways. Here's the situation. Mm -hmm. uh, I actually read an article. He was routed off of the highway because there were protesters on the highway. Mm -hmm. And he, and I've seen video, he was stopped by protesters. Exactly. They were looting his trailer. Yes, they, they were. They were looting his trailer. According to the article, there were two people that pointed a gun at him. Mm -hmm. I don't know if that's true or false. But there were people banging on his truck. Now, if that were me in my situation, and if I was not locked in by other cars, um, yes, I would try to drive away. Because I don't know if their intention is to hurt me or to steal my freight. No, if your intention is just to steal my freight, have it. You ha take it. This is my house. Please leave my house alone. Me and my cat are here. Just do whatever you got to do. Just leave the front half alone. Mm -hmm. I have nothing to do with you know, I'm just out here trying to do my job. Um, and so on that aspect, I don't, I would have, I probably would have driven away because I would have been petrified for my life and my safety, whether there's a gun involved or not. If you are on my truck, banging on my truck, um, yeah, I'm going to get scared and I'm going to freak out. Now, can I see what's going on between my doubles? Absolutely not. Can right. I see what's going on 250 feet behind my truck? Absolutely not. So it's, Again, it's that kind of a situation. That tanker driver that drove onto the freeway, though, man, the highway was closed up. So I'm not really sure how we got on the highway. Mm -hmm. um, and I don't know much else about that situation, so I, I don't know. Um, if I accidentally got on the highway and I was rolling up to a crowd of people, and I would stop. I would stop. Like, they just, it's common. Now you now you talking about now you talking about the now now you talking about the tanker driver right on I thirty five. Yes, if I accidentally somehow managed to get on a closed highway, a quote unquote closed highway, mm -hmm. um, and rolled up on a very large mass of people, um, I would stop the truck. Like I'm just realistically speaking, they're only going to come at you and attack you if you get close to them. And you can see far enough ahead of you, there's something up there that doesn't look right. Maybe I should slow down or stop and reassess my situation. Now, but now they, again, now he, now they say in, in, in that article right there, because there's a lot of mixed, uh, mis mixed communications on every aspect of that, of the tanker driver. Now, I, I looked at it, and a lot of people look at me, you know, they, they you know, saying, you know, lockout, you don't know what you're talking about, that's, you know, this, that, and the third. And I'm looking at it from point both sides of the field. For some odd reason, he, he managed to get through the, the blockade. Maybe they, you know, maybe they didn't put the blockade up. Maybe they didn't get there to where he came on in time. But... He's, you know, I'm he's driving on a highway, and I'm I'm looking at it from the from the driver's point of view. He's driving on a highway, kind of wondering to himself, like, you know, doing sixty five, kind of wondering to himself, like, huh, where's the cars at? Where's that's what I'm saying. Yeah, okay. And then all of a sudden, he happens to look up, and he see just a massive group of people like on the highway so of course the first thing you know he's doing 65 of course the 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 course of action is to stop unfortunately you know you're doing 65 miles an hour you need a football in a half a football in a half okay. field to stop the truck so luckily when he pressed on the the brakes to stop the truck 
Luckily, everybody scattered out the way, you know, to get, you know, out the way. And he came, of course, he came to the stop, you know. Unfortunate, uh, you know, unfortunately, you know, the, the way it turned out wasn't even supposed to turn out that way. It was, he didn't, I, and I'm still looking at it from the, from the driver's point of view. He didn't know. You know what I'm saying? He didn't know. Correct. And then now you got to, now he's trying, everybody's crowding his truck. Now he's trying to go. Like, all right, well, let me hit the horn. Get out of there. So they can, Absolutely. you know, right. So now he's trying to go, but he gets snatched out of the truck. He gets plummeted. He gets, uh, you you got, and if you hear, if you listen, if y'all seen that video and y'all listen real closely, you can hear a woman in the background saying, kill that man. Uh, and that's and and that's sad to hear too, because it wasn't like, you know, okay. it wasn't like he did that on purpose. And I'm on looking purpose. at it from a from a trucker's point of view. Now, looking at it from from the air, you know, when they had the helicopter, or looking at it from somebody else's camera, then yeah. It looks like he was just barreling through, you know what I'm saying, without right. a care in the world, you know what I'm saying. And like I said, I didn't know the whole story, mm -hmm. but in in and as a truck driver, my I get it, but like you can see a crowd of people mm -hmm. from more than a football field and a half away. Just saying. Because where that was up on the 35W up by the yeah that yeah the uh, bridge as a matter of fact that's ago. as a matter of fact that's the same bridge that collapsed years ago mm -hmm. so yeah and so as you're coming as as a Minnesotan mm -hmm. I drive that all the time I've driven it I lived there ten years I've driven it a lot when you were coming up to that bridge. Yes, ma'am. From the direction that he is coming. Mm -hmm. The bridge is ahead of you, and it is it is not, not by any means does Minnesota have hills, but there is an incline to that bridge. He can see those people. He could have seen that. You can see it from a distance away. So that is something that, like, was he so caught up in his thoughts that there's nobody on the highway that he wasn't looking ahead of him? That may be the case of why he didn't see them uh, far enough in advance to be able to stop the truck and kind of wonder, like, where the hell am I and what's going on? Mm -hmm. um, and you're right. It could have, I mean, we have all been guilty of driving and missed that sign that says um, detour ahead. Because mm -hmm. I, 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 you know. And then all of a sudden you're like, oh, I'm going to turn right here. And it's like, whoa, whoa. Like, oh, <laughs> exactly. Okay. You turn, yeah. <laughs> you turn, you turn your head for a hot second and then you turn back like, whoa, what the hell? <laughs> it happens exactly. to everybody. So, right. Right. I mean, and, and legitimately that may have happened to him. And then he may have been on the highway and he may have been looking around like, I saw no cars on that. There's something going on that I don't know. Like, and questioning himself and kind of looking around and trying, like, because at that point, your brain is not, you're preoccupied. We are distracted driving at that point. And then, yes, holy crap, there's a sea of people. And, mm -hmm. yes, and, and all of those things could have come into play, which created what appeared to be a truck driver who didn't care about protesters. Um, and I, I can honestly say, as far as I know, as far as all the trucking communities, that uh, groups and pages that I am on uh, and a part of, I have yet to see somebody who's like, oh, I'm going to kill some pedestrians. Right. Like, that's not, you know, we're just trying to do a job. Exactly. You know, and, exactly. and as a truck driver, a lot of people I know are involved in these um, protests and have literally, like, you just care about your truck and your freight and blah, blah, blah. And I'm just like, okay, that's, if that's the way you see it, okay. Again, like, just, there's no point in arguing with somebody who has their mindset. And right now, a lot of those protesters have their mindset that we're the bad guys. Exactly. Um, I, I, I've, because, 
Oh, go ahead. Well, go ahead. But I was just going to say, everybody's so, and I don't want to say that they're close-minded, like, to everything, but they are so laser-focused mm -hmm. that they are failing to see the big picture. The big picture, exactly. And looking at it from all aspects. Because I'm going to tell you right now, um, there are many aspects involved. There were four police officers and one gentleman. That is five perspectives of what happened. Mm -hmm. And then there was how many people standing around and videoing it. And then you have all of those people's perspectives. And in life, we don't look at anything beyond our own perspective or as a group perspective. And that's really sad because you're missing out on so much more by narrowing down your focus that way. I got you. I got you. Man, Melissa, awesome conversation today, man. I I, I love it. I, I, I enjoy conversations like these. You know what I'm saying? And it doesn't necessarily have to be about trucking. Is we, we, we covered all, you know, covered all bases, man. So I do appreciate you coming on and uh and chopping it up with me. I really do. Um so where where can the um you know, if the people is interested, especially, you know, in your weight loss journey, where where can the people find you at? Um, on Instagram, that's where I'm the most active. It would be Trucking Unicorn. Trucking Unicorn. Where you come up with that name, Trucking Unicorn? Um, unicorns are rare and mystical creatures in my opinion. And being that I am a competitive bodybuilder and an over the road truck driver, I am one of few, if not the only over the road competitive bodybuilding truck driver. So I am rare and mystical. All right. All right. All right. And not, and, and guys, man, the, the, she's, she's cut. <laughs> she is cut i kid you not uh, she is cut if you guys want to uh know more about you know her training her nutrition aspect and everything hit her up on uh definitely hit her up on instagram because she said that's where she's the most active at um uh, and uh and yeah uh before we go what's what's this what's this efficient or uh did i pronounce that right efficient yeah, affinity, affection, affection. Yeah, that's the word I'm looking for. What's this affection with with Peterbilt's? What's what's that? <laughs> um, I have a crazy fetish for sexy, sexy Peterbilt, and I like the old ones. I like the three seventy nine, three eighty nine, the big old sexy stretch. Those, those the hoods, hey. right? Those the hoods, oh, right? Yeah. yeah. Oh man. Uh -huh. Yeah. So uh, I really don't try to talk to them anymore because they used to pass me, and I get on the TV and be like, "Hey, daddy!" And apparently, they think I'm actually talking to the driver. I'm actually talking to the truck. <laughs> 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 oh man. Uh Melissa, man, when you when you roll up to these truck stops, man, I mean when you when you roll up to these truck stops and and a cut diesel female like yourself get out of the truck, what's what's the uh what's the reactions? What what what's what's the reactions you get? I really don't get anybody to talk to me. Oh, they I see them look at me, but nobody ever actually talks to me. They can't be intimidated by you, are they? I don't know. Oh my I don't know. God! Like, Come on. I I just fuel my truck, and you know, if they say hi, I say hi. If they don't speak to me, I don't speak to them. If they have a sexy truck, I just kindly as I walk by, I'm like, "That's one sexy truck," and I just keep on walking. Oh, okay. Um, I I'm out here to do what I do, and see the things that I want to see. That's what's up. That is what's up, man. That is what's up. Well, Melissa, Melissa. Woo! 
I'm about to, I'm going to call you Cut Diesel. God damn it. <laughs> uh, again, thank you for coming on, man, and 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 uh, chopping it up with me and my my listeners and my viewers, man. Um, awesome conversation, man. Awesome conversation. This young lady's a massage therapist, bodybuilder, competitive bodybuilder, truck driver, all in one. You did the total. She is the total package right there. You you can't, you guys cannot go wrong with the total package, Melissa Williams. All right. That's, that's, that's the female Let's Luger. <laughs> oh man well guys that is it for uh for this interview for today man uh thank you melissa for coming on and talking to us yo if you guys interested in coming on all you got to do is hit me up in the gmail that's lockout me and podcast at gmail.com or 216-600-2090 or Go over to Instagram, make sure you subscribe, and hit me up over there. You know, if you guys want me to talk about something or talk to anybody, let me know. Hit me up, you know, and I'll, I'll get it out there for you guys. If you like, if you like good conversation and good content like this, man, don't forget to like, subscribe, comment, share, and hit that bell and that all button for more content like this, man. Awesome conversations, awesome guests. You just don't know what's going to be on the Lockout Men podcast. You know what I'm saying? And on that note, me and Melissa, we are out of here. Sometimes when I start talking about my passions and I apologize. No, no, no apologies needed. No apologies needed. That was hey, so awesome. So awesome talking to you, man. I mean, I I I appreciate the advice, the love, the 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 passion in, in what you had on, on some of the stories. You know what I'm saying? So don't no apologies needed, man. None at all. All right. Okay. So I'm on your Instagram and I, I'm mystified. Can I, when I'm going through to, to pick out the, the, the photos for the, you know, for the, for the, for the podcast, do you mind if I, if I, is there certain ones that you don't want me to use like the bikini no, you can use those. I, I, uh, if you actually scroll further down, I'm not encouraging you to, but if you ever do scroll further down, I do um, some modeling as well. Oh, okay. And it's, I do like regular stuff. As you see, I have some of those with my Peterbilt belt buckle and stuff, some modeling photos in there. Mm -hmm. um, but I also do some specialty modeling, like, media some kink fetish culture modeling so. yeah i see yeah i, 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 I see <laughs> I, I i see the one with the with the tush <laughs> yeah. yeah i see so, the one yeah. with the tush <laughs> yeah so, so that, that's just so you that stuff anything else you're welcome to use if you want to do like my competition photo that's fine although i do appear to be chocolate in that call, in that photo, when I'm really not that dark, but that's what they do. They spray you oompa loompa orange, and when you're on stage, you kind of look chocolate. Not a problem, not a problem. I just want to make oh. sure you, you you got you you got a gang of uh you you got a gang of nice photos though. I mean, you know the okay. the competition, uh the the workouts. This one right here from two uh, 2012 to 2018 a miraculous a miraculous oh. transformation man that is so fucking beautiful excuse my language so freaking I'm beautiful so man i mean that that yeah. is that is wow how you was able to continue to 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 work on your work on your figure and and look at you now man like like i said you 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 cut diesel in 2018 man keep it up well and that's that's what I, well and that's why I do those because 
because I know a lot of people, you know, for fitness people, they look at fitness people and they're just like, wow, wow. And they think they're so perfect. And it's like, I just want people to know that I was just like any other average American. I mean, I used to be a heavy drinker and a smoker and, you know, it just takes time and people forget that. So I always, like, I have like a six year progression photo uh, up on Instagram that shows, you know, six years of hard work to get from where I was to where I am. Because that's my biggest thing is if you, if you're going to motivate somebody, make sure you're real. Don't just motivate them because you post good pictures of yourself. I'll post my flaws. I talk about my flaws, um, all of that. And I just, I think people need to remember that. Let me ask you this. Do, do, and I know I said this inside the podcast, but do guys be intimidated by you, though, for real? In the trucking world, I have no idea. Um, How about I, outside of well, trucking? Well, in the social media world, I'm not going to lie, probably <clears throat> at least once every two weeks, I get a random dick pic in my inbox. Oh, my God. Hey, D- and a really? dick pic, and I'm like, wow, is that all you've got to go with? Is that is that your strong point in your life? Is, wow. Wow. Um, and, again, as a very real person, if you, if I get them, they message me. Hey, we should meet up on the road sometime. I don't even know you. Well, I think you're really good looking, and I thought, you know, we could hook up. And I'm like, dude, I'm a truck driver. I am not a piece of ass. And then I actually screenshot that conversation, and I post it. I post it to my Instagram story, and I do not edit out their name for the simple fact that you are socially inept, and people need to know that. How do you want? How, and I know that. What? How how do you want guys to approach you? How, how do you want them? How do you want? You know, because there there's a sea of dicks out there for real. You know, the dick yep. the, 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 the pic though for real. Who have, who idea was ever to come up with the with the dick pic in the female's inbox? You stupid. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. I, you, you you stupid. I I can understand if if you was doing it for your girlfriend or something like that, but right. a random chick, a dick pic though, for real, bro, you stupid, man. So in a sea of dicks. Women do it too, though. Women do it too. I mean, all the, most of the guys that I know and am friends with are all owner operators, and they tell me all the time, "Oh, they like women will randomly send them nudes, like very minimal conversation, and they get a nude." And I don't know where that became a thing. And I, well, I do actually. I have an opinion. Social media has created these facades, and they don't, a lot of people really don't know who they are as people. They know who they are as an Instagram personality or as a social media presence, and that would be their social media presence. Mm -hmm. They don't know how to interact with people like 20 years ago before there was social media or even before that. So ultimately, like, I am a real person. I am a human being. I have lots of thoughts, feelings, and emotions. Mm -hmm. Um, And I have many diverse topics that I am passionate about. And talk to me like a person. If you're a dude and you want to talk to me, and you're a truck driver, or you have an interest in, like, you want to eat healthier, fine. Just talk to me. Just ask me a question. Just be real. And if you want to compliment me, fine. Please just don't sexualize me because if you're going to sexualize me, do it in your head. I don't want to let her know how you're sexualizing Exactly. That's, it's, it's, it's crazy. It, it, I, I always say that females already know what they look like. They already know they got a fat ass. They already know they got big tits. They already know that. Come up with something else, bro. And one of my greatest friends is actually from social media, uh, Mikey Largecart. And he messaged me, and I don't remember what he said to me at first. He was like, so are you a truck driver? Because at that time, my page was very fitness-based. And I said, yes, I am. And we just started talking about fitness and being a truck driver and just normal conversation that you would have 
with somebody at a coffee shop or, you know, you're driving down the street and somebody's got a nice car. Wow, oh, that's a really great car. And then you start talking to them about their car. And then that obviously, as conversation goes, it evolves into more conversation. And that's what I want. I just, just be the real you. And if the real you is the person who wants to send me a dick pic, please don't send it. I don't want to see it. Because if, if, I'm, if, if I'm not having anything to do with that part of your body, um, and I'm not attracted to you, then that's not an attractive picture to me. Gotcha. Gotcha. Well, again, so Mel, thank you very human much. Human to human contact. Again, man, thank you very much. I, I do appreciate this conversation, man. If you have anything you want to yeah. promote, if you have anything that you want to promote in the future or anything like that, you know, definitely call me up and uh, we'll get it out there for you. Mm, okay. All I don't right. think I do, but okay. I mean, if I'm if, when I do a show, I'll definitely let it go. Oh, Tim, uh, my show for July got canceled. So. Yeah, of course, because of the pandemic. Uh, yeah. Yeah. All so right. when I get ready to do a show, I will definitely let you know. I appreciate that. Thank you. Thank you. All right. So I'll talk to you later. I'll go ahead and uh, right. I'll, I'll find something. I'll, you, you got so many on here to choose from, but I'll find something.